Okay, so this is the lesson for when I'm going to be gone for pre-calculus. And we're going to be talking about stuff from 1.2 and functions again. So if you remember from yesterday, um, we talked about if something's a function, it has to pass the vertical line test. So as I draw a vertical line on the graph on the left, you see that I only hit the graph in exactly one spot. And so this would be a yes, it is a function. However, at the second function, if I draw a vertical line in certain places, I can for sure hit two dots uh, or two points on the graph, so to speak. And so this is not a function. <clears throat> when we're looking at functions, we want to make sure we know how to talk about the domain and the range. We talked a little bit about this yesterday. And what you'll recall is I drew some pictures based on uh, the graph of the square root. And so this particular graph in number two means that I've shifted one unit to the left. So as I decide to graph this thing, you will see that my graph looks like the following, something to this effect. And then as I look at the domain and the range, I could tell you that my domain starts at negative one and goes forever to the right and that my range starts at zero, which means it's on the x-axis, of course, and goes forever in the positive direction. <clears throat> if I want to talk about um, what's going on algebraically, the domain, if I want to work with that down below, is that I know that the x plus 1 must be greater than or equal to 0. And so when I solve this, x is greater than or equal to negative 1, which of course I can write as this domain solution. And for the range, I know that since I have a radical, that my y values, since I have um, the f of x function being a square root, I know it has to be greater than or equal to 0. And that's exactly what this is saying for the range. And so those are the solutions. Um, algebraically. <clears throat> when we talk about increasing, decreasing, and constant functions, um, you'll find that there are a lot of variables that are involved. And so what I'm really going to do is I'm just going to break down all these definitions by showing you an example down below at number three. And then you can kind of go back and look and see um, in this increasing, decreasing stuff, if you can plug in numbers. I've always found that it's really helpful to use numbers. And if you have questions about this, again, feel free to come and ask me. But let's just take a look at number three here. And so in number three, um, what I notice is that I see a graph that if I look at increasing and decreasing, increasing means going up from left to right. So if I look at the word increasing, here is where my graph is going up. And then again, here my graph is going up. Whereas, if I look at the decreasing, um, this is where my graph is going down. And what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to talk about the x values for increasing and decreasing. So a big note to put back up here, whenever you talk about increasing and decreasing, <laughs> You're only talking about x values. So it's really important to note we're just going to be talking about some x values. So down below, what I really need to do is I need to find the x value here where it changes and here where it changes. And if I can find those, then that's really going to help me out. So what I want to find out is the point right here which looks like it's negative 2, and this point over here, which is 2. And if I talk about increasing, the increasing is occurring on the x-axis between negative infinity to 2, because that's where the orange is on the x-axis, and then again from 2 to infinity. Again, we're just looking at the x-values where my graph is increasing. 
And then that must mean, of course, that the decreasing part is happening between um, negative 2 and 2. Oops, and it looks like I forgot my negative sign with my increasing. Notice how all of my, my intervals that are all x values are all parentheses. The second thing that you should know is that with increasing and decreasing, always use parentheses with increasing and decreasing. Always use parentheses. And the reason is when you look at like a mountain top here or <clears throat> a valley down here, right at the moment where it's changing from increasing to decreasing, there's nothing really that's happening. You can't say it is increasing or it is decreasing. That's the location that it's changing. So number one, increasing and decreasing is talking about x values. Number two, we're only talking about the x values. So when you look at where things are increasing and decreasing, what we're talking about is the x-axis. So here is the increasing x values. Again, the increasing x values and then in between is where the function is decreasing, just as a reminder. So there are three sections. You could even draw a number line to relate it back to what we had talked about earlier. So if I had a number line and I put my critical values, this is uh, negative two and two, what you would see is this was plus, minus, plus kind of thing in relationship to the graph and if, whether it's increasing or decreasing. There is a definition after this about maximums and minimums. Um, it's pretty evident to see from graphs, so we're just going to move on to the graphs themselves and talk about stuff. And I'll show you how to do this in your calculator too. So we're going to use our graphing calculator to estimate the relative maximum of this function. So first of all, I have to type it in my calculator, so please bear with me while I type this into my calculator. So I'm loading up the calculator right now. And then after we do that, I can move on. Okay, so if we type this in our graphing calculator and we look at the picture uh, down below, we see that this is an upside down parabola and we want to find um, what our maximum value is. Um, everybody has their own techniques on how to do this. My favorite technique is to use the calculator to um, look for the maximum. So what I would do is I'd go second trace and we want to find the maximum so I go down to maximum hit enter it will then ask me what is the left bound and all that means is move your cursor to the left of the mountain top so I move my cursor to the left of the mountain top and then I hit enter And then it'll say, what's the right bound? That means move your cursor to the right side of the mountaintop. And then I hit enter again. And then it says, where do you guess? And then so you just go to the top of the mountain and hit enter. And whatever you see for the Y value is your answer. And as you can see on my calculator, it says 1.3 repeating. So that means that's my maximum value. So the relative maximum was 1.3 repeating. And that's because when I looked at my graph, I saw the graph that kind of looked like this. And they're talking about what's the y value right here where it's hitting, where it's the top of the mountain. And the second uh, problem that we see that's similar to this, they talk about profit for a company and they talk about the modeling of this profit. So this is another one that we're going to see. And they say, what's the maximum profit? The most important thing in this particular problem will be to check your window, number one. And also to realize that we're talking about that what we're talking about is sold in thousands. So adjust accordingly. I'm going to hit pause. I'm going to put this in my calculator, show you a picture, and then talk about the maximum profit. Okay, so I've typed my equation in the calculator here, and you can see that my graph doesn't look so hot because 
um, it, all you see is kind of like a straight line. So I'm going to change my window a little bit, and this is really kind of the most important thing to try and figure out your window. And sometimes this takes practice, but what you'll notice is that my Y value, um, I see a 132.1, and that's my starting Y value. So I need to have some pretty big numbers in here for the Ys. And uh, since you're talking about what's the maximum profit when you're creating units, I don't really know that you'd have to go negative for X values. So I like to kind of start with zero for the X values. And then um, after I do that, I don't know how far I'm going to have to go, uh, but it didn't look like 10 worked out so well. So I'm going to go with 100. So sometimes I go up by 10 times the full just to kind of see what's going on. And I don't really want to see about negative profit. So I'm going to start with my Y minimum at zero. But since I'm talking about 315 X and 132, these could be big numbers. So let me just start with 500 for a maximum Y value and see what happens when I graph this thing. So I know it's a cubic, but all I see is just a little bit of the cubic, so I'm missing something here. So maybe I should change my window just a little bit to see more of the cube um, and see, because I'm looking for the maximum where the top of that is. So I'm going to expand my window, and maybe this time I'm going to go with, I don't know, negative 100 this time and see if that changes anything. And, uh-oh, sorry. So I'm going to go from negative 100 uh, to 100. I like to actually go up by 10 each time I do these kind of things. So I'm going to change this scale to 10. And my Y minimum, maybe I'll start with negative 100 again. But it didn't look like I saw the top of my stuff. So I'm actually going to go up to um, more, maybe like 2,000, to see if I can see what's going on. And now when I look at my graph, if my scale is going to be maybe like 200, I can kind of see in my picture down below on the right-hand side um, a mountaintop. And so as I look at this thing and I'm looking at the mountaintop, uh, one of the things that's kind of important to realize is that you can't go up forever. And so this graph um, on the side looks something like the following on your calculator. And if you... Um, if you're looking at um, the part where you're going up forever on the far right side, um, you can't really take that as your maximum. So really what they're talking about is the mountaintop here that I'm looking for on my calculator. So now I'm going to go back to my calculator. And as I look for this mountaintop, I'm going to do the same thing I did before. So I'm going to graph this thing. And in my window, I see the peak of the mountaintop. And in order to find that mountaintop, which is over here, I'm going to go to second, trace, um, and I'm going to find the maximum, which was number four. And it's going to say the left bound, so I just need to be to the left side of the mountaintop. So that's maybe just right over here somewhere. Hit enter. Then move to the right side of the mountaintop and then hit enter. And then I'm going to guess somewhere in between there. And I'm going to hit enter as well. And you can see what the maximum is. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. So in this example, I see the number um, 1,822.6973. So let me just um, write that down and then talk about what that thing means. So the, the maximum that you would most likely want to write would be uh, 1,822.68. Um, but you got to remember that this is in thousands, which means you have to move the decimal place three spots. So if you don't write the word thousands afterwards, probably what you should have done is write down that you have 1822. 680, or in other words, $1,822,680 to the nearest dollar. So either you would have to write the thousands or write down um, the number that you see in brown, which is $1,822,680. So be kind of careful when you're doing that. Next, we're going to talk about something called the greatest integer function. 
And the greatest integer function has